Well, hallelujah, friends. Welcome back to High Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life, and Jesus the Messiah is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And together the people of God say, hallelujah. Well, friends, my heart is full of praise and worship this morning. I pray that yours is as well. I trust that you have the book of First Enoch open in front of you. If you do not, I will place a link in the description box where you can follow along with us. We are continuing our study in the book of First Enoch, and today we are in chapter 46. Now, if you have it open in front of you and your Bibles, uh, let's begin with verse 1, chapter 46. And let me just say, this is a beautiful passage of Scripture, and I say Scripture because of this. There is a quote that is made by someone who has provided commentary on the book of Enoch as well, and this is what he says in this chapter, but concerning the entire book of First Enoch. Every Christian should resent having this book kept from them for so long. The book of First Enoch was looked upon as scripture by Jesus and the early church. Much more publicity and publication has been given to the Dead Sea Scrolls, which if you'll remember from our study, contained within those findings was the book of First Enoch. And he says, all the attention has been given to those Dead Sea Scrolls, but very little, if none, to the book of First Enoch. And he says of the Dead Sea Scrolls, they contain little or nothing of significance to Christians, whereas Enoch contains enormous amounts of significant information that confirms the New Testament. And friends, I'm overjoyed to say that that's exactly what we're going to find in this chapter. And so I pray that this chapter will lift your spirits and cause you to want to praise and worship the mighty God, the Lord Jesus, whom we serve. So let's begin in verse 1. And there I saw one who had a head of days, and his head was like white wool. Now let's look at Daniel chapter 7, verse 9, which says, I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the ancients of days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. Revelation chapter 1 verse 14 also says, His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. And so back to the book of First Enoch, which says, and there I saw one who had a head of days, and his head was white like wool. And with him was another being whose countenance had the appearing of man. Now this is Jesus. And remember, Enoch is seeing this before Moses ever came on the scene, even before the flood. And he's recording this for us. And even then, he sees in the throne room of God, the Lord Jesus himself. His face was full of graciousness, like one of the holy angels. Now, friends, we give a lot of credit to those who've lived among us for the saintly deeds that they have done, but no one compares to the graciousness and the righteousness and the purity and the servanthood of the Lord Jesus. And Enoch says his face was full of graciousness, like, like one of the holy angels, but different than the holy angels. And I asked the angel who went with me and showed me all the hidden things concerning this son of man. Who was he? And whence was he? And why he went with the head of days? And he answered and said unto me, This is the son of man who has righteousness, with whom dwelleth righteousness. Now remember, Jesus' Hebrew name is Yeshua or Yeshua, which simply means salvation. What greater name could God Almighty take than that of salvation, restoring man back to his original state, offering him a way of reconciliation? And so he says, this is the son of man who has righteousness, with whom dwelleth righteousness, and who reveals all the treasures of of that which is hidden. Now, do you remember in Colossians chapter 2, verse 3, Paul says this, in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Now, Paul writes this after Jesus' death and resurrection, 
And yet Enoch says here, who has revealed all the treasures of that which is hidden? Because the Lord of spirits has chosen him. It is he whom he has found faithful and whose lot has the preeminence or the superiority before the Lord of spirits in uprightness forever. And this son of man whom thou hast seen shall raise up the kings and the mighty from their seats and the strong from their thrones. And he will loosen the reins of the strong and he will break the teeth of the sinners. Now we discussed this a few chapters back, but basically all those who put their confidence in this world and the things of this world, power, fame, success, money, fortune, the Lord Jesus is going to usurp their authority. They are going to bow their heads in shame and guilt and recognize that he is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. They won't do it in this life, but I'll promise you, friend, there's a day that's coming where every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. So are the praises of his people. It says in verse 5, he will put down the kings from their thrones and their kingdoms. Why? Because they do not glorify, extol, and praise him. That's what extol means. It means to glorify him. Nor will they humbly acknowledge. Notice that word humbly. They will not humbly acknowledge whence the kingdom was bestowed upon them. They will not bow or surrender to his lordship. They trust in their own might, their own will, their own way. And he will put down the countenance of the strong, that proud look on their face, that defiant look on their face. He will bring them low and he will fill them with shame and darkness will be their dwelling and worms shall be their bed. Do you remember when Jesus told us in Mark chapter nine, verse 44, when he says the worm dies not and the fire is not quenched? The craving for sin, the craving for self-satisfaction, the craving to feed their own inner desires, it will never die. It will forever be with them, yet it cannot be satisfied. He goes on to say, they shall have no hope of rising from their beds because they do not extol or glorify the name of the Lord of Spirits. And these are they who judge the stars of heaven. This is a bad kind of judgment, friends. And it's talking about these proud, unrighteous, rebellious sinners. They, will, they judge the stars of heaven. And they raise their hands against the Most High. Now, in Job chapter 15, verse 25, we read, For he stretches out his hand against God. That means he shakes his fist in the face of God. He stretches out his hand against God and strengthens himself against the Almighty. In the book of Revelation, after all the wrath of God is being poured down upon mankind, you would think that they would surrender. But chapter 16, verse 11 tells us that they blaspheme the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores, and they did not repent of their deeds. You see, it must be the Holy Spirit that convicts a man of his sin, his unrighteousness, his rebellion, and brings him to a place of surrender before the Lord. Not even the wrath of God itself will do it, friends. It's only when the scales fall from our eyes and we see ourselves in great need and despair of salvation, which again is what Jesus means, Yeshua salvation, he who brings salvation to the world. And so they raise their hands against the Most High. They tread upon the earth, they dwell upon it, and all their deeds manifest unrighteousness. And their power rests upon their riches. And their faith is in the gods which they have made with their hands. Do you remember when Jesus said, even if someone came back from the dead in the story of Lazarus and rich man, even if the dead were to come back from the grave, it would not be enough to bring them to a place of repentance. If they don't listen to those of us who are proclaiming the message of God and preaching repentance to men, they won't even listen to the dead or angels or Jesus Christ himself. It says they have denied the name of the Lord of spirits and they persecute 
the houses of his congregations. Not only do they shake their fists in the face of God and seek to do everything in their power to destroy his name from the face of the earth, they want to destroy everyone who holds that name dear. And that's what we're told in the final line of this chapter. The faithful who hang upon the name of the Lord of Spirits. The faithful who hang upon the name of the Lord of Spirits are persecuted by the unrighteous. So friends, count it great joy and victory if you're being persecuted because you hold the name of the Lord Jesus so dear. If his name is so precious to you, if he is the reason that you wake up and he is the last thought that when you go to sleep, lift your hands and give him praise and glory that you can suffer for such a great cause as his. We're going to close here today, friends. But as I said in the beginning, I pray that your heart has been elevated in praise and worship for the great and mighty God that we serve. For he is so deserving of such praise and honor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And let me close again by reading the statement from this commentator. Every Christian should resent having this book kept from them for so long. For thousands of years, it's been hidden. And it's just come back to light in these last hundred years that you and I are living in. And remember the whole purpose of the book, as Enoch tells us in chapter one, it is not for the generation that he is writing in in the days of Noah, but it is for a remote one, which is to come. And isn't it interesting how the Lord has allowed the book of first Enoch to come back to light in these last days that we are living in. And yes, I truly believe that we are in the last days. And so the commentator goes on to say the book of Enoch was looked upon as scripture by Jesus and the early church. And so should it be you and I friends. Much more publicity and publication has been given to the Dead Sea Scrolls, which contain little or nothing of significance to Christians. Whereas this book, First Enoch, contains enormous amounts of significant information that confirms the New Testament. And not only the New Testament, but the Old Testament that was written after the flood. All we've seen is confirmation. Not one piece of contradiction so far, and we are in chapter 46. So I am excited about what's to come. And I am excited that the Lord has allowed us to have this book again. To read things, even though they are confirmed in the Bible, they're not as clearly laid out or given to us in the Bible that we have today. Well, friends, I love you, and I'm, I'm so thankful and privileged to be able to carry the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I am so thankful that he forgives my sins. I'm so thankful that he will one day usher me into the kingdom of heaven, and I know that you are as well. I pray that your soul has been touched today, that you have been blessed, that your heart has been lifted, and that you will walk throughout this day full of praise and joy for the great things that your God has done, is doing, and will do on your behalf, on my behalf, on our behalf. All together, the people of God say, hallelujah, hallelujah. I love you, friends. Now, as Yahweh wills, and until next time, I'll see you on the next video.